Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to the desktop for another retro RPG. Now, like many people, I've been enjoying the last couple of weeks playing Cyberpunk 2077. It's a very buggy game, and the glitches I find are very emotion-breaking, but it's a whole load of fun, and it builds the world of Cyberpunk really, really well. So much so that I've ended up delving back into my old role-playing books. So this week I'm going to be sharing them with you, or a bunch of the books, because I couldn't decide on one to cover. So this week I'm actually going to be covering four or five different books. And today I would like to present this. The Chromebook 2. The Cyberpunk Style Guide, volume number 2. And it's a follow-up, the 1992 follow-up, to the 1991 Chromebook, which I've covered previously. Now, as you can see, the cover artwork is a heck of a lot better. While Chromebook 1 was very stylized in the uh, sexy robot style of art on the cover there, this is taking the artwork to a whole new standard. And it does kind of lead to Cyberpunk going in a slightly different direction. Whereas Cyberpunk I've always felt was the sexy, stylish role-playing game, where so much of the game is based about how your character looks, you know, how you're portraying yourself to the world, you know, you're a, a punk, your image is everything. Whereas Chromebook 2 started Cyberpunk down a path to becoming more technological, um, everything has to have an advantage to it. But I'll talk about that as we go through. Let's start off with the back cover. It's here. This year's issue of the style guide for the 21st century, Chromebook 2. Make a flashier statement with the chillest sideware. Ride the smoother groove with the hottest cars. Deliver more bang for the euro with the most advanced weapons ever presented. This is the essence of cyberpunk. The consumer items that your edge runner needs to make his mark on the streets of Night City. Chromebook 2 showcases new electronics, chips and software, plus bodywear, exotic body exotic biosculpting for the Euro Decadent and Nouveau Riche. It's the cat's meow for those who want to be more than uniquely perfect or just the king of the urban jungle. Also available for the first time ever, Total Body Conversions, the ultimate in cybernetic replacement. All this and more in this year's Chromebook. You've already got the metal, now give it a polish on the edge. And that's what it is. It's pretty much the same as Chromebook 1. It's an equipment guide for cyberpunk. So we start off with the cyberware section. And we've got some stylish things. You know, change your hand so you've got six digits or long alien digits. You know, anchoring cyber feet, different useful equipment. So opti shields. So modifying the way your face looks. Kill display, a tattoo which counts up as you kill more people. Color gland control so you can change the color of your eyes. Gradated subdial armor. Fantastic. Very much more stylish than the Shadowrun body plating where they just put large ballistic plates into the chest and the person looks very blocky and square. This, them shields which make it look more defined if anything. Subdermal view screen, have a uh, video screen built into your arm. Nano optical upgrades, retractable vampires. Upgraded skin weave. So just lots of cyberware there. Then we're on to equipment. And a shoulder mounted camera. Environment scanners. Security systems protection field. So like a electroshock force field. So if anybody comes too close, they get shocked. Computers and peripherals. Kiroshi optic heads-up displays. Look like a Borg if you want to. A flop screen. I like that idea for when players are planning a mission that they could just fold down this big square foot, um, big um, screen, plug it into their terminal and plan everything out. It's more of a storytelling thing than a game thing. And it's quite expensive. Remembering you can get an entire cybernetic arm for 2,000 euro bucks. 400 per square foot means that this screen can be very expensive. A wearable computer. Medic gear combat medical armor. Security scanners and equipment. Just lots of different things. 
Uraska Scanway, Scanner Gates. Obviously very similar to the thing out of the Arnold Schwarzenegger Total Recall film. Cyberdex and net stuff. So, goggles which allow you to see the uh, cyberspace. An arm deck. Chameleon armor. Just so many really interesting, useful add-ons to the game. Um, Battle Gear Sneak Suit. Now, this is where it starts to differ slightly. Because in the Chromebook 1, they had lots of clothing which was stylish and gave you some armor ratings. So you could get a suit with some ballistic weave put into it. So, as well as looking like a corporate suit, you got some armor protection. But everything now is more about the abilities. Gibson Battle Gear. There's no picture here showing how stylish you look. It's all just about what it adds to your character. So we've got sort of drones here. A spy and assassin remote. Then on to weapons, something Cyberpunk really excels at. A ramjet rifle. A net gun. Rheinmetall kinetic energy railgun. Underbearable capacitor lasers. A pulse rival for, for 3,500 euro bucks. An antimatter rifle. Well, it's actually an anti-material rifle. It doesn't actually use antimatter. Which at 6,000 euro bucks strikes me as very, very expensive. As I said before, a cyber arm only costs about 2,000 euro bucks. So the idea of all the technology to give somebody feedback into their hand and be able to use it skillfully as they would a um, meat hand being a third of the price of just a big powerful gun strikes me as a bit strange. But some very cool stuff here. A missile launcher rifle. Vault pistols. Nauseator riot control device, so it sends out sonic blasts to cause people to vomit. So you can control crowds with it. A chain knife, a spawn blade, a blade which is thin so when you stab it inside, but then you click it and the blade suddenly fans out inside the wound, doing a lot more damage. Taser wallets, so when they pick somebody's pocket, they get shock. Different types of ammunition. Pistol grenades, so small grenades you can attach to the barrel of your gun. Very, very cool stuff. Then we've got teams, so these are much like the services we had in the previous book, things you can hire. Now, do you want to hire a trooper? Or medical aid? Auto jocks. And then we're onto the full body replacements. Now, this is a major selling point of the book, where... Basically, instead of getting a cybernetic arm, you get an entire cybernetic body. Now, these are quite expensive, 40,000 euro bucks for the very basic one, and they go up from there. But it's a very cool idea. It doesn't feel exactly cyberpunk to me. While it's within the realms, uh, it, to me, it feels a little too advanced. The fact that you're taking somebody's brain out and putting them in a robot body. It seems to be going beyond just replacing parts of yourself with cybernetics. Um, but it fits into things. Uh, many of the manga which Cyberpunk's based on, um, the anime, obviously has complete replacement bodies. And this fits within that. So it just feels wrong to me, but... Obviously, it felt right to the writers, and I can't really criticize that too much. Um, Militech Cybernetics International Covert Operations Suit. So, a stealth body. A Robocop body, even down to the visor. Although, he looks a bit silly with the flashing lights on his shoulders. A firefighter body, the Brimstone. The Gemini. So, looks absolutely human, down to... Uh, Muscle clusters, which flex under the skin. The wingman, a pilot one. Samson, heavy industrial work body. And then we've finally got the dragoon. So a big mecha body for people to fight in. Yeah, it's 120,000 euro bucks. 
obviously planned for the Games Master to use it against the players rather than players to end up in one of these. Although there is options if you've got the cash where you can get your brain put in a pod and transport it between bodies. So you can go to a meeting in your Gemini human looking body and then when you're going on the mission you can step into your Dragoon combat body. And these are really interesting. It's taking Cyberpunk, as I said, into a more futuristic direction. Rather than near future, we're really getting into science fiction concepts here. But I can't complain at it. It's really cool to add to the game. Then we've got some vehicles. So the Aerodynes, the flying cars of Cyberpunk. I like the look of the Mach a lot. It's very cool. Um, like a dragster version of a flying car. The Swan, which looks more conventional business style. The Ashigaru, which looks a bit spiky on the front. I can't imagine that being too safe in traffic. You bump into a pedestrian, you'll take their kidneys out. Bermuda, sort of long chopper style forks on it. Darkwin, and then we're on to aircraft and mini jets. So we've got combat fighters and transport planes here. The FedEx Boeing Falcon. So a large heavy lifter plane. Airships, which of course are very much part of a cyberpunk setting because of the blimps in Blade Runner. And then we're onto exotics. And this is one of the stylish parts of cyberpunk I don't really like. Um, the idea of stylish conversions to basically change yourself into humanoid animals. So we've got the exotic cat, the um, body, mouse, bunny, snake, um, the bear, the orc, the tiger, the superman. I'm not really keen on these at all. The faithful dog showing a policeman. Would really a policeman be allowed to appear as a dog? Surely that would be against regulations. I think they've got regulations over hairstyles, never mind getting yourself modified to look like an animal. Shark, insectoid, and dragon. I don't like these. I think they're a bit silly. While you might have an NPC in it, you know, you meet a billionaire who has had themselves transformed to look something different. The idea of putting in eight pages or so of modifications to make somebody look non-human and offer it to players just doesn't feel quite right. And we've got the play beings which come with the Mr. Stud Midnight Lady implant. So these are bunny girls at the extreme for designed just for having sex with. And we'll finish off with the index. And that is Chromebook 2. I like the presentation a lot and I really like a lot of the contents. But I do feel that it's the start of diminishing returns for the Chromebook series. I'll do Chromebook 3 and 4 at some point in the distant future. But I really feel that they were not as good as the original Chromebook. And while this is only slightly behind the original, it does. I don't feel it is as good a book as the original Chromebook. But anyway, I've witted on for quite long enough as usual. Thank you very, very much for watching as always. Please like and subscribe and comment below because it does me massive favours with the YouTube algorithm. But most of all, as always, you look after yourselves and I'll catch you later. Bye now.